Hi there, I'm Nick and welcome to Pitch Kettle Acres Homestead. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to start a homestead from scratch, but first I need to let these chickens out. All right guys, before we get into this video, I wanna take a moment right here and just say thank you. Last night we hit 10,000 subscribers on the channel and honestly, my mind is blown that people are finding value in this. We grew from 1,000 subs to 10,000 in just about a month, maybe 35 days, completely mind-blowing to me, so thank you. I don't expect anything from anyone on this channel. I just like to make these videos. It's a creative outlet, and I like spending time with my animals and doing things around my property. I like filming it. I like editing, so thank you for that. If you're not already subscribed and you like these kind of videos, feel free to subscribe if that's something that you wanna do. The other thing I have to say is that uh, this is my second time recording this video. Yesterday I came out here to record this specific video and whenever I went in to edit and build the video, my audio hadn't been hooked up correctly and I had no audio. So after 45 minutes of recording, it was all for nothing. Hopefully the second take is better. So here in my notebook, I wrote down, I don't know, maybe 10 questions or so that I feel like anyone who wants to start a homestead or is sort of interested in it, needs to ask themselves these questions and needs to answer these questions for themselves. So I'm gonna read the questions. Some of these are questions that have been written into me through comments in previous videos and some of these a lot of these are questions I had to ask myself and answer myself before starting our little operation. We tried a homestead several years ago when we first bought this property and it worked out and then life got super busy. We had more kids and it got crazy. So we put it on the back burner and now we're back. So I can say in all honesty and reality, I am a beginner. I'm figuring it out as I go, but these are some important questions to ask yourself. Question number one, what is a homestead versus what is a farm? You have to know kind of what direction you wanna go in. A homestead is where you provide for yourself, your family, and your immediate community and friends and that sort of thing. It's a small scale operation, basically centered around your home for yourself. A farm can provide all of that as well, but it also has a large scale aspect to it. You could say that if you're trying to jump right into farming, uh, there might be higher pressure because you kind of immediately need to turn a profit in order to make it work. A tremendous amount of work goes into building a farm, running a farm, and so you need that to be profitable right away. Whereas a homestead is basically growing food for you, your family, your friends. When we started our little operation, we called it Pitch Kettle Creek Farm because on the backside of our property, the backside of our five acres, we have a creek called Pitch Kettle Creek, and I thought, that's a great name, Pitch Kettle Creek Farm. Then, as we started building it out, I realized I don't want to be a farm. I don't want to have to provide for a large scale operation yet. I don't want that pressure on me yet. Maybe that'll come later on down the road. So that's why we changed the name to Pitch Kettle Acres Homestead. Smaller. You have to ask yourself, which one is for you? The second question, how much land do you need? How much land do you need and how much land is right for you and what you want to do? Well, for us, we have five acres. We have two and a half clear field acres and then we have uh, about three, a little less than three wooded acres and that's wooded and wetlands. So maybe half an acre of wetlands so we can't touch. We can't do anything with it because it's protected. That's where the creek is. The woods, we can do something with. We can cut firewood, we can maybe put goats out there one day, woodland goats or woodland sheep, that, that sort of thing. But our main priority and our main focus is maximizing the use of the cleared land. Now, for you, you might live in a town, in a city, you might have a quarter acre, you might have an eighth of an acre. Really, I would say a quarter acre or maybe an eighth of an acre, you can get by with that, is something that you can start a homestead on. You see urban homesteaders, you see people that are in neighborhoods that are homesteading, and all homesteading means is you're growing some kind of food for consumption, or you're raising some kind of animal for consumption, or both, um, and then maybe you do some things there that can earn you some sort of income on the side. Crafts, that you sell at craft fairs, who knows, it's up to you. However, there are things like cows. If you wanna raise cows or a lot of sheep, you obviously need more land because they need grazing land, so that's something to consider. We want to raise uh, a milk cow, so we're looking at mini Jersey milk cows, and hopefully that's something that we can get into in the next year or two. But I would say, safely, to start out, maybe an eighth or a quarter acre, it's a good starting place for a very basic, very simple homestead.
Our Jersey Giants have begun laying eggs. This is egg number two. We got egg number one out a few days ago and it's in the incubator right now. Next question, what do you want to raise or produce? Do you want to raise animals? Are you a vegan? And so maybe you don't want to raise animals for consumption, obviously. Um, you have to answer that for yourself. I used to be a vegan. I started off vegetarian, went full vegan. After about a year, year and a half, realized that is uh, not for me. My health was terribly declining. And so um, I went back to a standard meat and vegetable diet and it's good. So for us, what makes sense is to, to raise meat and vegetable on our homestead. So what do we raise and what do we grow? Well, standard vegetables are what we grow. My wife raised a, a fantastic garden this past season. It was very small, but she put a lot of time and effort into it and it flourished beautifully. Uh, we currently have a few different flocks of chickens. We're raising those mainly, primarily for egg production. We're raising those, um, some of them for meat. We eat our roosters. So if you hatch chickens and you get a lot of roosters, you can raise those roosters to 20 weeks, butcher them, and you have fantastic meat. It's all in kind of what you want to do. If you're not interested in raising animals like chickens or rabbits or quail or that sort of thing, you can always just stick to vegetables and kind of streamline your operation that way. Look at that thing. That is a long egg. How much time and money are you willing to spend on it? For us, um, we have a small business, self-employed, and we're able to streamline that business to where we can devote a fair amount of time to taking care of the operation here. Really what limits me being sort of the primary caretaker for the animals is daylight hours. As we get back into like spring and summer and the days get longer, we'll be able to do more, we'll be able to add more, do more work on the property. However, you have to answer the question, how much time are you willing to invest into your operation. A great question to ask yourself and one that I'm currently asking myself now and really need to come up with some answers is what are your long and short term goals? What do you want to get out of it? Like, what is the final end point? I don't know that answer for myself. Maybe the end goal is just enjoying the journey and not really having an end goal, just enjoying life and doing things a simpler type of way. I don't know, I'm only 36 right now, but I feel like the older I get, the more I just find the older ways very, very appealing. All right, so going back to the subject of having chickens or not having chickens, big question you gotta ask yourself, where are you gonna get the chickens? Do you wanna go to Tractor Supply or uh, you know your local feed store, which is kind of a crapshoot because normally they don't do a very good job at selecting the females from the males. And so you kind of just get stuck. Or you can go with a, like a reputable hatchery. And the reputable hatcheries will typically, they have a better idea of pullets and cockerels and what they're, what they're sending you. The other thing, do you prefer going with a hatchery where they're just hatched in bulk? Or would you rather go with a heritage breed that you can get from a local breeder who has sort of perfected that breed or that lineage of chicken. Another great thing to consider is, do you wanna hatch your own chickens? That's what we're doing right now. We have a couple dozen, maybe three dozen eggs in our little incubator. Incubators cost like 60 bucks. I'll link one down in the description below so you can kind of see what I'm using. Uh, they're about $60. You put those chicken eggs in there for 21 days and in 21 days, you have chicken. Like there's more involved to it. You gotta flip the eggs every day or, or buy an egg turner that will turn the eggs for you, but for the cost of electricity for this little heater in a styrofoam box, you can hatch your own eggs. It's pretty cool. That's it, one egg from five hens. The next question, what do you wanna do with the excess or the surplus of the things from your homestead? Depending on how many chickens you have, you're gonna have excess eggs. Depending on how in depth you go with your garden, you'll probably have a surplus of vegetables. It'd be a wise thing to answer that question or at least have some sort of plan, a semblance of a plan before you get to the point where you're overwhelmed with a surplus. There's a hawk flying overhead and all the chickens are hiding underneath their little bungalows. Pretty cool to see. As soon as that hawk started screeching, the roosters gave a little call and everyone went, went running for cover. 
that's a great reason to have a rooster. If you're able to, highly recommend having a rooster. Oftentimes, hens are so busy just focusing on eating the right stuff so they can produce eggs that sometimes they don't notice that there's hawks flying overhead. Those roosters are always on the lookout. They're a great protective element for the hens and they'll give a little call and everyone will just go running right into their, uh, right into their little safety shelters. What are your state and local regulations? Now, it sucks that we even have to talk about this, but especially if you live in a town or a city, you need to know what the regulations are for having chickens or having you know, a front lawn garden. Some people do that, they'll have a front lawn garden. If you're part of a homeowners association, it's probably gonna be quite difficult to get chickens or like a front lawn garden. So does your town or city allow chickens? A lot of towns and cities uh, do not allow roosters because they're so noisy, but they will allow up to like four, maybe five hens if they're kept in a certain kind of enclosure. If you decide to raise chickens, are you raising them for meat or for egg production? Here's what I love about chickens, especially if you just have hens. It's the most ethical protein source, probably on the planet. Nobody has to die. A chicken is going to lay an egg nearly every single day, depending on breed, for the first year or two of her life. After that, egg production slows down substantially, but for the first couple years, you're gonna get an egg several eggs, we'll say, per week from each hen. There's no catch. There's feed costs, but that egg is, is ethically free. So the question is, do you want chickens for eggs and or meat? Like I said, we eat the surplus roosters we have, so our roosters go into two categories. We have breeders and we have feeders. The breeders, are like Silver Dollar right there, he's our main rooster, he's a breeder. He breeds with the females so we can hatch new chicks. The second category, eaters, um, they are just what they sound like we eat them. As long as your roosters are young and, and you don't let them grow too long, they are quite tender and so tasty. So those are all the questions I have for you. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you again for 10,000 subscribers. My mind is blown and I am so humbled and grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With that being said, I will see you on the next video.